I'm at a friend's house in Howell, New Jersey today, putting cabinets in his laundry room. The cabinets are the easy part. I'm not gonna bore you with that, but I am gonna show you he needs a couple of outlets installed. And so those outlets don't exist. We're going to add them. And we're gonna show you how to do that today, coming up. All right, here is the laundry room. And these are the cabinets. Now in between these two cabinets here, we're gonna put this beverage fridge. So there needs to be an outlet here. In addition, there's gonna be a countertop so they want another outlet above the countertop. So now the situation is this, there's a stud right here and the studs here in this house are 24 inches on center. Now there's a bedroom on the other side and there is an outlet in the wall and from that doorway, it's at about 48 inches. So it's on this side of the stud. I realized I'm going a little bit too fast here. My objective is to pull power from an existing outlet, so that's why I wanted to find that outlet on the other side. And just keep watching and you'll see where I got it from. But that was my initial thought process. So the trick here is to always put your power, always put your new outlets in a stud bay. So there's a stud bay right here and that's where we're gonna put them. Now this is also a, you know what, I'll open it up. This is their, I guess, network communications hub. It's really just for cable and whatnot right now. But you can see they wire it for an outlet. I decided to attach my new outlets to this outlet because it's gonna be easier than working from the other side of the wall. So we're just basically gonna put an outlet kind of in the middle of this counter and then we're gonna put one down here for that fridge. Okay, this is my electrical toolbox, and there's a very important piece of equipment in here. Now, when I'm working with wires, I test the electricity with this to make sure I have voltage turned off. But when I'm dealing with an outlet, I've got one of these testers. Yeah. See how it has two green? Two green indicates that it's wired correctly, a correct ground and correct polarity. So I always look for two greens whenever I plug that in. Now we're gonna find the circuit breaker that turns this off. There you go. All right, now we see that the breaker that was turned off is a 15 amp breaker. That's important to know. It's either gonna be 15 or 20. Now there's two basic kinds of wire that you're going to be dealing with. This is 14 two, you can see it on here. It says 14 slash two. And this one is 12 2. 12 is thicker than 14. 15 amp, you can use 14 gauge wire. If you had a 20 amp breaker, you need to use 12 gauge wire. 14 goes with 15 amp, 12 goes with 20 amp. I know, it's confusing. Okay, what I'm using here is called an old work box. And you can tell an old work box because it has these little flanges that stick up and they're attached to screws in the front. And what I've done, is I've marked where I want that box. I want these tabs at the top to sit against the sheetrock. So that's why I just marked it right up to those lines and now I'm gonna cut it out. And this is the kind of saw that I'm gonna use. Okay, with the power off, I took the outlet out and you can see it's a metal box and it's got a hole already cut out in the bottom of it. So I'm gonna use that hole to fish this wire. All right, so the connections are really pretty easy. The white wire goes on the silver screw, which is where the white wire is now. And on the other side, there's a brass screw, and that's where the black is. Now the tricky part is the green one because there's only one green screw, and I need to hook both ground wires up to it. The way that I'm gonna do that is with an interesting kind of wire nut that has a hole in the top. I can attach that ground wire to this one, but the wire will come out the top and I'll rewire it. All right, so now I've got the black one is on the brass screw. The white one is on the silver screw and I attached both ground wires to the green screw. So now I can close this up and then worry about the new stuff. Okay, now the old work box has these tabs on it that you have to push in with a screwdriver to drive your, your wire in like that. And it's just a friction fit. See, once it's in, it doesn't come out.
although I could use the press-in connectors and just stick the wires in the back, I always like to use the, the screws on the side. I think they hold tighter and better, and it's just the way my dad taught me, so that's what I do. Those of you that hate stripping wire, these things are pretty awesome. In one easy motion, you just put the wire in here, up to that red little stop, and just pull. And look at that, how easy that is. And it has a, a wire cutter here as well, and crimpers. So I'll put a link to these in the video description. Now this one down the bottom, because it was the end of the run, I could hook the ground wire right to the screw on the outlet. But this one is the middle of the run, so it's got two wires coming into it. So I had to use one of these fancy ground connectors. So two wires, they come together here, one of them goes to the ground screw. You can't connect two ground wires to the same screw. It's not allowed. So if you don't have these fancy connectors, you have to make a, a pigtail and put them all under a wire nut. Now, the white's on the silver side, the black is on the brass side, and that's it. Now I just gotta put it all back together and give it a test. And there you go, two greens. And two greens. And two greens, everything's wired correctly. All right, we got an outlet there. We got an outlet there, it's ready for the countertop. I'm ready for a beer. Let's see here. Ooh. White Claw Mango. Gotta get a little towel.